So I recently added a new furry friend to my life a sweet little pup to join me in the adventures I take on. Her name is Eden, and she is an 11-week-old golden retriever. She is full of life and brings me so much joy. Even through puppy teething and potty training and everything else that makes her a handful, I could not be any happier to have a dog to call my own. I have wanted this for so long. Eden, as most young dogs, is full of energy and always wants to play. But after a thrilling round of fetch or a long walk, she crashes. Now, there are many places in my apartment where she could pick to go choose and rest. She has a safe spot in her den-like crate in my bedroom. She has a lot of blankets scattered all over my living room, a nice comfy bed in my dining room, and many other nooks and crannies where she could choose to get away and snooze. But no matter what, Eden always insists on laying right up next to me. If I am working at my dining room table, she ignores the dog bed and sleeps on my feet. If I am on my couch, she demands that she snuggles, not on the opposite empty side of the couch, but right in my lap. And if I am in my recliner, she is persistent till I finally give in and let her wiggle in right next to me. This is all right now, as I am still able to function with a very tiny puppy nestled up to me. But, of course, Eden is going to grow. And with her big size, she will be a distraction on my lap. Many owners of big dogs know that sometimes dogs just don't know how big they are. Dogs of all ages generally just want to be as close to their human companion as possible. They don't want to be keeping an eye on you from some separate location, but instead they want to be as closely connected to you as they can get. While I've only had Eden for a very short time, I have already witnessed God's very being through her life as a little pup. Of course, a dog mirrors God's unfailing love, devotion, and companionship, but while I was watching her sleep, right up next to me as I was typing this sermon, her nose was actually sitting on my laptop as I was typing this, I saw an even deeper connection between a dog's story and God's story. Today we hear the beautiful narrative of how, like a dog, God desires to get as close to humans as physically possible. Mary Ellen Ashcroft, in her book titled Dogspool, The Gospel According to Dog, describes how she rate, relates the incarnation to her own dog, whose name is Clooney and Clooney is a 90-pound black lab. Ashcroft writes, Like God, Clooney forgets she's huge, that she has a big tail and enormous paws. In her desire to love you, she wants to climb into your lap. Like Clooney, God became a lap god, compressed in multiple cell form, squeezed into the smallest space, growing in Mary's womb, not watching from a distance, but closer than close, within and around, Emmanuel. Through the birth of Jesus, God kind of does become like a lapdog, 
not watching creation from a distance, but rather becoming as intimately connected to our human story as possible. Emmanuel, God is with us. But when we break it down, what does God is with us really entail? Well, first, God. God is with us. We proclaim God as holy and mighty, but we often overlook the very thought that God makes God's presence known in baby Jesus, a baby, tiny and vulnerable, totally dependent on Joseph and Mary just to survive. God then grew and dealt with all the fallbacks of being human, hunger, emotions, pain, all just because God, all-knowing and all-powerful, wanted to get as close to us as physically possible. Is, God is with us. Not, God was with us once, but no longer is. Not, God will be with us eventually. Instead, God is with us presently, then and now and forever to come. God will dwell in our hearts wherever we go, and we won't be able to wander too far from God's loving embrace. God deeply abides with us now. With. God is with us. It wasn't going to work for God to stay away, so God became with us. In the original Greek text, the word with comes first in the phrase, God is with us. So a very, very rigid translation, they always remind me of Yoda, could read, with us, God is. Maybe this is to emphasize how radical it is that our amazing God would actually come and live alongside us lowly humans. And the word here has a deeper meaning than simply with. This word holds a lot of value. With can be translated as among, in company, in the midst of, union, or fellowship. Much deeper than simply with us. God is among humans. God is in fellowship with humans. God is in company with humans, not watching from the sidelines, but personally connected with us, fully immersed and all in. Us. God is with us. God didn't become human for just a few people, not just for me, not just for you, but for us in community. God became human for the collective whole, for all of creation, for the sake of the world. Emmanuel, God is with us. So sure, to Joseph, this might be a little daunting before it is comforting. So no wonder Joseph was intimidated when he learned that Mary would carry this Emmanuel. But thankfully, Joseph responded out of faith instead of reacting out of fear. Joseph listened to the angel, embracing the unknown that was about to come with Emmanuel. Thankfully, God was walking beside Joseph all along. God walks beside all of us too, and for specific purposes, to save, to comfort, to forgive, to challenge, to serve, to empower, and at every point, pulling us back into a greater relationship with God. Here at St. Philip, we embody God's relational love and get as close to other people as we can possibly get. Take, for example, the dedicated group of people 
who make a point to visit our homebound brothers and sisters. They go out of their way to be in and around these people, not sending cards from a distance or even making phone calls. They visit, engage in conversation, laugh, share Holy Communion, and are fully present with people who can no longer make it to church. Or take brown bag ministry, where we don't simply donate money to feed some random people. That would be easy. Our community meets and crafts each sandwich by hand, then carefully places these lunches in bags, making sure no piece is missing. From there, the bags don't get sent somewhere unknown, but rather people deliver them face to face, time after time, building relationships with our brothers and sisters at Cedar Point in a way that lovingly connects our congregation to our friends just down the street. We go in and among and don't sit back. How else is God calling us to embrace God's profound relational love? In this fourth and final Sunday of Advent, I invite you to truly embody God's relational love. Maybe this means introducing, to, introducing yourself to someone after the service that you don't know, but have seen for the past month. Or if that's a little bit too much, Go out of your way to share the peace with someone you normally wouldn't reach out to, and then introduce yourself to them after the service still. If we all did this, the body of Christ here would become even more fully connected to one another, expressing just what Emmanuel stood for. So I challenge each of you to share the peace of Christ with someone new today. There's no better way to draw connection with someone than coming together to share Christ's peace. The coming of Jesus into the world is the ultimate sign of God being with us. I pray that in this final week of Advent, we all truly embrace the gift of God's relational love with those we spend time with to celebrate the good news of Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen.